Hey everybody, Patrick Ryan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. I just wanted to take a minute and introduce you to something new that we're doing here on the show. Um, it's Cryptic Experiences. It's going to be a new part uh, of Cryptic Accounts in which we interview people who have had firsthand accounts of ghosts, paranormal activity, aliens, UFO sightings. Really, if it's anything like that, we want to talk to them firsthand and interview them on this show. And we wanted it to be kind of a separate thing from Cryptic Accounts. So on this, I'm not sure how often they're going to come out, but me and Dennis, Dennis who will be on the show shortly, don't worry, Dennis is still here, um, we'll be interviewing different people. And if you've had an experience, we would love to talk to you about it. So reach out to us on whatever platform works best for you, Facebook, Twitter, uh, you can go to the website crypticaccounts.com and there's a contact uh, tab there that you can fill out a form and get to us that way. You can email us at accountscryptic at gmail.com. Really, whatever works best for you, we would love to talk to you and possibly interview, for, interview you for the show. So on this first episode, we have Laura Bowen from the band Shadow Sin, who started having uh, paranormal experiences when she was a very young girl, she had a few of those, a couple of those actually, and then later on, her son actually began having experiences as well. So that's what we're going to get into on this episode. So thank you so much for listening, and be sure to subscribe, rate, like, comment. We see all that, we appreciate it, and we thank you so much. Tell a friend. All right, let's get into the show. Hi, Laura. Welcome to the show. Hello. So I, I'm not even sure where to start because there's three stories, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Two that involved you correct, in, in, directly, and then one that involved your son, but you were there for it. Was it your son? Oh, the one with Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I want to start with uh, the first experience you had when you were. How old were you when you had the first one? Um, I think I was four. You were four years old. Okay. Four or five. Okay. Wow. So this is like a, some of your first, like really vivid memories, I would assume then. Yes. Okay. So four or five. So this is like 1989, 1990 ish. Well, let's see. That would have been in 90, 90, 91. Okay. So early, very early 90s, you're four or five years old. Um, just go ahead and what happened? Um, well, I used to, this sounds horrible, but uh, my dad used to, like for punishment, s- stick me in a closet. Oh, wow. Uh, in the dark. <laughs> and I would cry like the whole time because I was terrified of the dark. So. Yeah. Very emotional yeah. experience for a yes. very young child. But he was a drinker, so you'd forget, and I'd be in there for a long time. Oh, wow. So, okay. So the first experience was just I always heard this lady, like, calming me down, like, talking to me, telling me I was going to be okay. But she had a British accent, and I never really thought about, like, there's somebody talking to me it just was mm-hmm. comforting and it now was did, only when I was in there now did, you, did you have anybody in your life like did you have any experience at that point with British accents like is no. there anybody in your life you know that... I've thought about that too like it took me a long time to remember like think about it and like I did have that thought later on in life like I'd never heard a British accent like you know not even on tv that yeah. I can recall you hadn't seen Mary Poppins. How do you know it was British if you'd never heard a British accent? Well, like later on, I, I, re- I, I recall that being that way, but at the time it didn't seem strange. It wasn't like this person is like talking funny. It was just very relaxing, very calming. And so um, is, is this happening like very early on? Like, it, it, can you remember times being in the closet where this didn't happen and then it just suddenly started happening? Or like, what's the timeline I, I like don't, on it? I don't remember it not happening. I remember. It just being really, like, kind of just there. And then I, w- I would wake up. Usually my mom would come home 
pull me out of there, put me in bed, and I'd wake up, and I'd just be like, oh. And then it started to be, I'd go in there, and I'd just be like, it's going to be, I'd freak out for him, and I'm like, uh, the lady will come. Then so it was did you fine. see her? No, it was dark. I could feel like somebody there, but I never saw anything. Like she was next to you? Yeah, well, like, she'd like do this thing, you know, like call she me. She touched you? You, yeah. you could actually Whoa. feel like a physical presence moving across your head. You yeah, that? and and then I was just talking to my cousin, like, well, not just talking to him, but I remember talking to him a long time ago about he didn't like that closet either. Nobody liked that closet because it was like the back of it was kind of messed up. Like, I don't know if there was a hole there and they like patched it up really bad. I just remember it being like kind of rough back there. And we would play, but nobody ever wanted to go in there. Mm -hmm. And he was like, something about that closet always freaked him out. Like, and now, so, were, you, were you the only one who got punished by getting put in this closet, or was everybody at some point put in this closet? No, my my younger brothers were babies. Like, they got put in their bed. And you're but the yeah, oldest. Was, I'm the middle, and my older brothers were too old. Okay. So, so you're the only one that's actually going in this closet. Everybody else is just avoiding it for no real reason other than maybe you get in trouble there? Yeah. I, well... Like, you know, when you're playing hide and go seek and stuff, it was just kind of this thing like nobody ever wanted to go in there. And I don't like know. Like, could you feel a presence like when you maybe, weren't in there? I think that, I think we all kind of did, but no, it was an unspoken thing like, oh, we don't want to go in there. It was scary. Okay. <laughs> just looks scary. Right. But when you're in there, you're getting punished. This voice is talking to you. What kind of things is she saying to you? Just, she, like, it's okay, dear. It's, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. It's okay. Don't cry. It's kind of that calm. And then okay. I'd fall asleep. I'd cry myself. Well, I'd cry and then I'd start to get tired and fall asleep. Okay. And then. How old? Wow, I'm really sorry. You had to... How old was the. Do you remember like, how old the voice sounded? It like, was, was it a grown older. Up? Yeah, it was. I, I would think a young lady, like a maybe 20s, 30s, but not like older, late. Not like it wasn't an old voice. It was a young voice. Would have been like a motherly age for yeah. somebody who was four or five. Yeah. Kinda... And I did, I remember saying something to my mom about when we were moving about never seeing the lady again. And she just didn't really, she's like, what are you, t what are you talking about? Whatever. Because we moved when I was <coughs> six. So. Okay. Then I just. So did you experience that up until you were six? I don't, I think until I was, uh, yeah, like almost six. Oh, so this is like a year or two this is happening, like, oh, pretty yeah. frequently? No, I'd say, my mom was working nights, so, I don't, I don't really remember how often. It wasn't like every week. It was maybe here or there every few months. It would be like in spurts. I'd go in there a lot, and then I wouldn't go in there, you know? Mm -hmm. My dad kind of would do better, you know? And get back and forth, okay. kind of like a, a reoccurring thing with my dad. But so it wasn't like every day, and I every day. So sometimes I'd kind of forget, and so when I'd get back in there, I'd cry and cry and cry, and then I'd be like, "Oh yeah." And then but, the and then the lady would show up. Yeah. It, okay. You know, it's weird though. Is when I think back, like it it didn't seem weird at all. <laughs> It's like what? a little kid, like, oh. Well, yeah, they, right. they, they say kids are more uh, receptive to stuff like that. And it, especially in an emotional situation like that, where you're very revved up and emotional, like, there tends to be a lot of stories where stuff like this happens to people around energy like that. So, like, and through all this, though, like, you never felt scared of this presence? Like, what was the general feeling? Just a comfort? Yeah. And then... Sometimes I thought to myself, I'm like, well, did I, did I think this person up? But once I moved, like, I never, never saw this person again. And there was a closet at the other house too, but it never saw the lady. Like it didn't move with me. Okay. Did that happen in other houses? Yeah, but, but it, but there was nobody there. <laughs> right. It was but just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the same situation happened oh, in, in a different yeah. closet. Your dad put you You're in right. there. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know why I thought that was great punishment, but 
nobody wanted to go in. I think to nobody wanted to go in that closet. Everybody was freaked out. So that was punishment, you know? I, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever talk to her? Like, did you ever have a conversation or, or ask her any questions or anything like that that you can remember? I, I don't think I asked questions, but I think I remember saying like, I don't like it in here. And I just went out of here and just kind of just talking to it, but not really asking anything just more like okay well at least i'm not alone in here <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna right. be stuck in the dark i still don't like the dark actually to this day yeah but, that might be related to some of those experiences a little bit yeah. I think. Well, that's very interesting okay well um, wait what do you think it was do you think it was a ghost or like a guardian angel or it it felt to me like i don't I don't know. I guess I never thought about a guardian angel. It was just more of like this presence that was in this house and it was not, it wasn't a, it was a good, good presence. And I'm not really sure why she was there other than maybe I needed her at the time, but I don't know. And this wasn't like in a super wow. old like house that you were living in. Correct. I'm trying to think how old that house was. I would imagine that house was probably built maybe in the 60s. Okay. So not super old. So a little history, but not a ton of history. No. Uh, Do you remember the address? No, but I can tell you exactly where it is. Um, you should, so, off after this, you should tell us. I want to research it and see okay. who lived there. The other weird thing about that house was in the backyard, there was this big concrete slab. And I know there was a building on it at one point, but it took up damn near the whole backyard. And it was a pretty good sized backyard. But there was like this spot underneath there where somebody had like dug a hole under there and then filled it in under the concrete. And I, my dad was always like, I wonder why somebody would dig a big hole under the concrete. And he's like, I wonder if something's buried under there. And I, that mm. always freaked us out as kids. You have a like, dead British lady in your backyard. <laughs> I don't know, but like, we were like, maybe somebody, you know, hid something there for a while and then had to come back and dig it up. And we had a really weird landlord. So, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, we're going to have to dig into that address a little bit, I feel like, Dennis. Yeah, I want to yeah. at least look through it. Yeah. We'll go on Google Maps few, later. I've driven by there a few times. They've updated the house a lot since I was there. It was kind of a piece of crap when we were there. But, yeah, I'll look. I'll find the address for sure. Very interesting. Very interesting. Dennis, do you have any other questions about this one? Oh boy. So she touched you on your head. Did she ever like hug you? Any other touching or physical movement? Did that things move? Yeah. Like I, it, I could, t you, it's so weird though, because like I'm thinking, how does, how would two people even fit in that closet? It was really small. It was a coat closet right off of our living room. But it, I did feel like, like, I always felt like I was leaning on a person, but wow. I would feel like the wall, but the, it, cause I'd always start sitting up. And then by the time I would kind of get relaxed, it felt like I was leaning back on somebody, not, you know, the coat closet that has like just a bunch of coats and shoes in it. But so I feel like this person was sitting behind me, like head up here, you know, and just kind of lean back. Just like that. That's crazy. I, I yeah. I guess yeah, the, unless there's, yeah. The physical it, touch part of it is very interesting. That's not something you hear a ton. It's usually more yeah. visual and audible, but not so much physical like touch. Like that. I feel like that is what I I, I remember that distinctively because I would just like it would make me fall asleep. Okay. So, yeah. dude, thank you for sharing that. That's that's <laughs> awesome. That's yeah. Well, she's not done. She has more. I'm stories. sure my family would think I'm <laughs> know, literally but... crazy, but <laughs> no. The more we're looking into this, there's definitely something to all this. There's something happening. There's something that's interacting with uh, human beings from some other plane of reality or something that's going on. So yeah. okay. So let's move forward a little bit now. When does your next experience happen? Um, oh, that remember me telling you about my grandpa? So yes. I, my dad's dad was like even meaner than my dad. 
I was just, I did not like my grandpa. He was not very nice. He was also a drinker and he was just, you know, you'd be very tense around him. So he passed away of cancer. I was eight and I'd never dealt with anybody dying before, but everybody was sad and I was just kind of, eh. You like, had this rocky relationship with him. You yeah, weren't very well, close with him, correct? Well, my gra- my grandpa just wasn't really close to any of the kids. He was just kind of like, get out of here, you know. And um, but I I remember my dad being really sad. It was the day of the funeral, and I knew we were going, but I didn't really understand like what's a funeral like. But I was sitting there, and it's very like sad in our house, and it was really early in the morning, and I was eating cereal at the table. And we had like a wooden table, but it had like a very um, glossy top to it. And I was the only one in there. And there was a light behind me from, like I'm in the dining room, the kitchen's behind me. And our dining room light was off. A lot of the lights were off. I just feel like everybody was just whispering, really quiet. And I'm just sitting in there eating my cereal. So and this I during taking, the day, this is like, this is it. This is early in the morning. This okay. is like the sun hasn't even come up. Okay. And so I was eating my cereal and literally in the reflection of the table, I literally see my grandpa's face, but he was wearing like a suit. And I never, I, when I think back to my grandpa, button up polos every day, like that was his go-to. I never saw a suit ever. But he was sitting there and he was looking at me in the table and it scared me so bad. I like jumped out of the table, I ran into the dining room and I'm looking and he's not there. And I grabbed my cereal and I went and ate it under the light of the kitchen. But when I went to the funeral, he had that suit on. Whoa. What color was the suit? Blue. It was a Navy suit. And I, my dad made us come up and see the body, which I would never do that to my kids that are little, but we had to go up there and say goodbye. And, and I just was like, he's wearing a suit. Like at first I thought I was like, man, that looked like my grandpa. But when I saw him laying there, I'm like, that was my grandpa. Like he was in, he was sitting across from me with that look on his face, like angry. And you'd seen all that in the reflection of the table or you're actually seeing him across the room. No, like he was in, like I looked, I was eating like this and I just kind of looked up a little bit and I saw him in in the table and I it scared me I jumped away like I I darted out of the chair because I was like oh my god there's somebody looking at me in the table and it took me a minute to think like who it was almost but then we went to the funeral and I realized for sure like that that was that's the suit the guy in the suit was um so it was like one of those glossy wooden tables was it like yes. he was staring out was it like he was staring no, out like, from the table or like he was like, over you like across the table sit like our table wasn't very big it was just a little square so like he was literally <clears throat> like looking at me in the reflection but it's Whoa. like so so it's like he's sitting on the other side of the table in a chair, mm-hmm. looking down at the table, and you're seeing that reflection of him looking down. But at that yes. angle, it seems like yes, he's and up at I, you. but it's, yeah, it looked like he was looking at me, looking at him in the table. Almost like a flip side of reality, where you can both somehow see each other, but he's on this upside down or whatever reverse. No, world it, or... it was just like he was looking down in the table at my, ref- you know what I mean? Like we're looking. But there's nothing there physically when you look up. No, when I looked up, there was nothing there. Okay. But it scared the shit out of me. I mean, I darted so fast. And then I tried to tell my mom. It's like, I saw grandpa in the table. And my mom really didn't dismiss it. She was like, well, I don't know. My dad didn't want, my dad wouldn't want to hear that. I didn't, she was like, don't say anything to him. That'll upset him. But yeah, he was, I, I will never forget that because I was already so afraid of him in real life. And then to realize that maybe he was, you know, he was already gone and he was in the the casket in the same suit just freaked me out. But it's like, it's almost like his spirit or presence or whatever was in the house with you. And then you later, it's like, 
he'd fully come out of whatever had happened with him. I don't. So he's in the suit that he's at the funeral. So it's almost like his spirit has moved from that and is now like going back places or something. That's. I don't know, cool. but. And that wasn't a peaceful feeling for you. I'm assuming you. you said oh you no, felt that was. Scared. I was scared, and. I think, well, at first I was just scared because I saw somebody in the table that wasn't sitting across from me. Yeah. But it was super eerie to see that suit at the funeral. Like that, that freaked me out. Yeah. To realize. It's such a specific, like, I've never heard a story like that. Like from a kid, you know what I mean? Like, that's so interesting. I was Did, just um, like, it's just, it, it just, I, I remember how like fast I jumped out of that table or out of the chair into the kitchen to go into the light. Yeah. <laughs> did he look, did he light. have a, did he have like a certain look? Like, was he happy, sad? Did he look angry? Like, how did he look in the, it's just like a, staring at you? Just like a, he always had a very serious face. So he was just his normal serious face looking down at me. Like, I don't know. He always had like a, just a shitty look on his face. And he was just kind of grumpy all the time. You know, he had to, and he had that face. Like he always did. Just freaked me out. So I just, poop, get on out of there. Oh, heck yeah. And, and I always wonder, I'm like, I wonder what he was doing there. Like, why was he, I don't know. Cause I was going to ask you, how like do you he interpret said that? Anything. Right. I how do you know. interpret I mean, that as an adult? I don't know. I mean, I always wonder if like when people go, maybe they, their spirit kind of goes around to kind of reflect on their life, maybe to kind of see the people they're leaving behind. But I don't know. It's bizarre, but. Did, did you ever freaky. tell your, did you ever tell your dad? No, I didn't. Um, I've talked about it with other family members and they're like, yeah, that's so weird. But I mean, my uncle is like the only one that was like, well, and my mom, she didn't dismiss it, but my uncle was like, I know he's been around here after he passed. He, he said he had some encounters too. So really? Yeah. Remember I told you about the door opening like the next week. Yeah. I, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to make sure that was the same story. Tell me about yes. that. So literally a week later, we're at my grandma's house and we're, we're sitting in my grandma's living room and how her house is, you walk through the door, the front door, you walk into the living room, you can go from the living room to the dining room to the garage door. Well, the garage door, you have to practically rip your arm off just to open it. Okay. And then out the garage door is like just a really rickety old screen door that just kind of, you can, the wind can blow it open. So we were sitting, it's myself, my uncle, and his girlfriend, and my brothers, but they were a little not really paying attention. They were playing cars on the floor. But it's like the door blew open, the front door, which I could see, I guess, if it's like a windy day. But then, like, like it blows open, and then literally my grandma's garage door that you have to practically rip open just goes, just... And that would just, be opening in towards the house, like towards yes, the, the other open yes. doors. So it's the opposite direction that even a wind current would carry that. Yes. And then we heard the other doors like kind of open shut. And my uncle went pretty white and he looked at his girlfriend at the time and they both were like, and it freaked him out so bad. He was like, all right, we're going outside, everybody out. And we, he went outside and chain smoked and waited for my dad to come and told my dad about it. My dad was kind of like, I think you're just a little bit on edge, which is why I never said anything because my dad just, he's got a rational explanation for everything. So, and this is a week after your tell. grandfather's funeral. Yes, which he passed away in that living room. So, oh. of cancer. He died of cancer. So, that's my uncle was telling all of us, he's like, he was, he's still in this house, you know, he hasn't moved on. And me as a kid, I was like, okay. So every time I was at grandma's house from then on, I'm like, I wonder if he's still here. Yeah, his grandpa I've already here. seen him once. Now he's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So obviously uncle is very freaked out by all of this. Like, do you remember having any emotional feeling or anything as this 
door yeah, flies open. Yeah, I was freaked out too because open. I realized that like that door never because I couldn't hardly open it as a kid. Like it swelled so much that you, I mean, you needed a grown up to do it. Yeah, and still to this day, you can't hardly open that door. I don't know why they've never fixed it, but yeah, it's it's a Does really hard door to open. Does your grandma still live there? Yeah. Has she said anything about? Have you talked to her about any of this? No, I don't. I don't remember if my uncle talked to her. She was so devastated. I don't know. Yeah, especially and, being. And a then week she recently, well, yeah, and she recently had her partner after my grandpa of like thirty years pass away in that house too. So Ooh. I don't want to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I keep your ear to the ground on grandma. <laughs> I'm kind of curious if anything's going on with her. I know. Maybe I'll ask her, but. Yeah, that was bizarre too. So yeah, I've had had several of these weird things. With the door thing, do you remember a, if you heard a doorknob or not? No, I just remember it flew open. It was like, Whoo! wow. So it sounded like it normally would had somebody like opened it. Yeah, it looked. I mean, I have never seen that door just open. Like, were you just visit, were you happen. actually in the room when it happened? Could you see it? Yeah. There? Yeah, we all saw it because it's like one door flew open and it just was like a wind went through the house and that door, which it wouldn't have been, okay, that is explainable. Maybe the wind blew it open, but for that door to just open like that was just, well, there's and no open way. into the house also doesn't make sense either. Yes. Like and the wind would have had to the, be coming from the other way. Yeah, and there was three of us that were paying attention to it and realized that door just opened. And it was like somebody walked through the house is what it looked like. Did it seem like somebody moved the knob with it? I don't remember paying attention to the knob, but I do. I just remember it opening. What do you mean it's like somebody walked through the house? It just the way it felt like this weird breeze through the house, like somebody like if somebody was like walk, beelining through the house, you know what I mean? Her house isn't right. very big, so I don't know. Just that this weird feeling. and. It did freak my grandpa. And I know my, my dad remembers him telling this story. My uncle telling him the story. He was like, well, your uncle, he said a lot of things. But like, I remember seeing it. Well, you were a kid. You don't know what you saw. Because in his mind, you know, everybody just goes to heaven. So it's not a thing. But it, it happened. It definitely happened. <clears throat> So do you remember that feeling any different? Did it feel similar to when you actually saw your grandpa in the kitchen? It had that, it definitely had, I was like same scared, like, because I'm thinking I can't get away from this guy. Like he's, (laughs) he made me so tense. Well, you're eight then. I mean, and that's where your mind goes with it is that this is connected just, yeah, like what's happening? Like, why is this keep happening to me? But so, yeah, it just, I definitely was freaked out, like, same freaked out. And it was just, and when you're that age, you just think nobody's going to believe you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That is, wow. <laughs> That's just, that's crazy. And all within a week of each other. You had a very turbulent few years there at the beginning of life. Oh, I know. It explains a few things, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, that wasn't what I was saying at all. No, I'm joking. Um, so, yeah. Do you have anything you want, you want to add on that one, Dennis? Um, no, uh, no, that's a really good story. Yeah, they were both uh, very interesting. So you have one more that's actually related to your son, correct? Oh, yeah, Gavin. So um, Gavin is named after his uh, great-grandpa, Louie. And he passed away four months before... No, I'm sorry. Two months before Gavin was born. And, um, you know... Uh, his dad's mom always talked about her dad, you know, Grandpa Louie, Grandpa Louie. And he had seen, like, family pictures, um, but he was three, so I don't think he really, like, absorbed him. Um, 
But one day I was staying with my mom and he was on the couch and he just kept giggling. And I was just like, kept peeking in at him. Like, what are you doing? Cause I'm in the kitchen. He's in the living room. And he's like, you're so funny. And I'm like, who are you talking to? He goes, grandpa Louie's really funny. And I'm like, grandpa Louie. I'm like, are you talking to grandpa Louie? Yeah. He's funny. And I'm like, and he just kept laughing. And I'm like, I don't see anybody. And eventually he's like, he's, he's not here anymore. He left. And then like we were, I think it was about a few days later, I was picking him up at his grandma's and there was some pictures that she had on her countertop and I was kind of looking through them and, and Gavin's looking over my shoulder and he goes, there he is. There's grandpa Louie. And I didn't point him out. He just knew. And I'm just like, that is so weird. But he was, and there was a, I'm trying to think of the joke he said to him about, I'm going to, I get your belly. I get your belly. And he told me, he's like, he got my, like, I didn't say anything. I don't think anybody had ever said anything in years. And he's like, he got my belly, mom. And I didn't think anything of it. And then I was telling, you know, his grandma about it and she was like that's what she did he always did that to the kids that was like his thing she was playing with him i get your belly and yeah and she was like i think she i think he saw him he definitely saw him i i bet he definitely saw him and i was like okay so this is your and this is your grandpa on the other side of the family no no this is this is gavin's dad's okay grandpa Okay. He passed away right before Gavin was born. And he's named after him. But he literally kept saying how funny he was. And then he got my belly, Mom. And I'm like, oh, he's, yeah, he's still a guy. And Gavin's three, <laughs> your grand, so your grand, that, that grandpa is not your grandpa, his grandpa has been passed for a little over three years at this point when this is happening. Yes. Okay. Interesting. How old is your son now? He's 10. Does he still remember? Have you talked to him about this? Or Yeah, and he's like, I don't know. I don't remember that. He doesn't remember. And you know what's funny is I'll show him a, I'll show him a picture, and he's like, I'll be like, do you know who that is? No. I'm like, that's Grandpa Ooh. Louie. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like, that's who you're named after. Oh, okay. Like, has no idea. So it's almost as if he'd met him, had an interaction with him when he was younger, and then didn't interact with him really ever again. Yeah. To where he doesn't have a memory of this. I mean, given he was very young. But it was just so weird because the pictures that his grandma has in her house are like when she was younger. So he had a full head of hair, and it was dark, but there was no pictures of him old. And the picture that he saw was like, that was on the counter that I was looking through was like one of the last pictures he ever took and he pointed him out. And a three-year-old isn't going to age someone in their mind very easily. They're not going to have that cognitive ability to do that. Right. Hmm. So wait, when your, when your son was three, did he, he described grandpa Louie's being old? He didn't, he didn't describe him. It wasn't until he pointed him out in a picture, like, that same week. Um, he just said he was funny, and then he got his belly, and he was talking to Grandpa Louie. And I said, okay. But it was so weird, because he kept giggling on the couch and, like, kind of falling backwards. But he was, like, it was like he was talking to somebody, but I was like, there's nobody here. He's like, oh, he's gone now. I'm like, okay. Like, Oh, Grandpa you know. Louie hightailed it when you came in. Did that? Uh... So, wait. So, okay. So, in the picture that he pointed out to you. Mm-hmm. was grandpa louis young or old in that it was the last picture he'd taken before he died so he was like old in his 80s you know okay, okay. and he'd only seen and he her- was and he was also very skinny and he wasn't as skinny as skinny before he got sick so he did look quite a bit different before he died he had he was bald white the hair he did have a little bit around the edges was white he was very thin because he passed away of cancer and So in the picture, he's just kind of sickly and he was waving and he pointed him out, which I think even people that knew him most of his life would have been like, he looked extremely different at the end of his life. 
So. So it wouldn't have matched at all the pictures that Gavin had seen of the grandpa being much younger and healthy. Right. Like, I mean, I, I think the the few pictures his, that his grandma had around her house, you know, she had like family pictures of them growing up and, you know, from when he was working and stuff. I know she had like a, a picture of him, um, much younger hanging, you know, after the funeral, she hung it up. But like I said, he had, you know, dark hair. He was a, you know, thicker build. So there's no way he would have recognized him. Wow. So it wasn't until he pointed him out that I was like, and so I explained it to her. She goes, yeah, that's grandpa. That's who you're named after. And I'm like, the weirdest thing happened. And she was, she was like, yep, that was him. He saw him. I know it. I knew you'd come back and see him someday. And I'm like, okay. That's awesome. Well, yeah, because he would have known that Gavin was on his way. He just didn't make it to Gavin being born. Right. And he wanted to so badly. Yeah. And he knew he was going to get named after him because we had told him. Because everybody got a chance to say goodbye. And, you know, we were like, he's going to be named after you. And, you know, he was like, I'm so happy. I can't. I, I just, you know, at the time he was hoping that he could pull through a little bit longer. But. He didn't, so I guess he did get to see him, though. Yeah, that's so. what it sounds like. So did anybody else in the family have any kind of experiences like this in that time period? Um, I'm not sure, so I'm not in that family anymore, so. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, understa- that's understandable, then, yeah. Very interesting. Dennis, do you have anything else you want to add to that? Um, no. Kids are psychic, man. I swear, they all see ghosts. Yeah, the more we've looked into this, it does seem like kids are just more easily accessible. They have a lot of raw energy and emotion that seems to make them more receptive to things that may be going on around us that not we don't normally see. Yeah, and I, um, I've kind of read about some stuff just because it is interesting to me because I do remember, and. I think um, children can possess old souls as well. And I think sometimes that also causes interaction with other souls. So I don't know. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Like we really appreciate it. Those are all very interesting stories. Yeah. I'm glad that I can share it. Yeah. Thank you. You're our, you're our first interview. Oh, cool. Yes. This is, this is fun. Uh, Well, I know Derek is wanting to, also share his stuff yeah we're, we're gonna interview your husband as well for some uh strange a strange experience that he had uh while training in the army so yeah so thank you very much laura for being here we You're appreciate welcome. you taking the time yeah, yeah, thank you laura no. all right we'll see you guys all right, thank you bye so that was it big thanks again to laura for letting us interview her about her experiences uh that's what cryptic experiences is gonna be all about is just stuff like that so if you enjoyed that be sure to like rate subscribe tell your friends do all of that write a review it helps out a baby show like us and we're going to keep on doing more and more stuff like this me and dennis really enjoy doing it so we hope you enjoyed listening listening to it as much as we enjoyed making it and we'll be back soon don't forget to check out the main show cryptic accounts which is this is the feed you're getting on anyway so if you're not caught up on all of those episodes. Uh, the Sally House was for uh, Halloween this week, and wow, one of the most haunted houses in America. So if you're into the ghosts and the paranormal stuff that we're doing, definitely check that episode out. And again, hit the subscribe button for us. We appreciate it, and we'll be back soon. Love you. Bye.